Right. So before the break, we have discussed on session 11 of UHV1. And now in this session, you know, we have planned to discuss on session 12, the society. And when we say society, you know, the very small picture of society is institution and the community. Where we get exposed to. So a very small picture of the society we can visualize for ourselves. Once I step out from the family, from my house, till my workplace and my workplace. And it's the same for students too. And then in our living, we get exposed to uh, different, different organizations, systems. So that is all part of our small society. So the session 12 is focused on development of this understanding about the society. Till previous sessions, we were discussing on development of our understanding. Harmony in the family. And now we are taking a step ahead. So before we initiate our discussions on society, if there is any urgent questions pertaining to the discussions we had till this moment, you know, we can take a couple of questions. Yeah, Jasmine KSG. Uh, sir, I want to put one concern here. That is the session love and love and gratitude is not done actually in the previous session. And you are directly going to the session 12. And there was also a question regarding love and gratitude. So I just want a clarity in this regard. Okay. Yeah, see basically, each one of us is living, right? Our students are also living. We are also living. All the human beings are living. Are we living independently in isolation or we are living, we are surviving with the support of many people and nature? So this is the question. Am I living in isolation? Am I independent or many people and nature is supporting my living and survival. Good. So at least, you know, we are able to see that we are not independent. And unfortunately, we want to be an independent. <laughs> so this is the confusion, you know, the students have. If you ask the student, they said they are studying because they want to be an independent. And uh, when we ask this question to ourselves, then we find that it's not possible to be an independent because there is always dependency, there is always interconnectedness, there is always interrelatedness with other human beings and with the rest of the nature. So for development of myself and for nurturing protection of my body, you know, I'm receiving my so question many. question was not this, excuse me. My question yeah, I'm, was I'm, not yeah, this. I'm, 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 I'm talking about the same, the gratitude and the love. Okay, sir. Okay. So the question is that, will I have feeling of gratitude towards all these people and the nature or ingratitude? So the moment I'm able to see that I am connected, interlinked, dependency is there, and there is a whole lot of people and the nature is supporting for my living and survival. 
helping me to understand. This feeling of gratitude is a natural. But if I'm able to see it, if I'm, I assume that I'm an independent, me, I, and that's it. Then we are not able to see how the nature and the others are helping in our development. And that is ingratitude. And the whole crisis today is because of lack of feeling of gratitude towards each other. And whole complaints are because of that only. So having this feeling of gratitude is significant in the development of relationship. So are we able to see that there are many, many people and the nature is supporting in the development, in my development, development of self and development of body. Development of body in a sense, nurturing and the protection of the body. So this understanding of relatedness, connectedness, interdependency, help us in developing that feeling of gratitude in us. And with that feeling of gratitude, you know, we feel that there are so many people and the nature has already identified and identifying their relationship with me. They have tried and trying to fulfill their relationship with me but it's me who is not able to see to it. And that's the reason, you know, many times the student has got complaints about their parents because they are not able to see, you know, they are the one, the parents are the one who has given birth. I was not able to walk. My parents hold my hands and taught me to walk. They tie the shoe lace. They drop me in the school and they have done so many things. Right? A very important part of their life they spend on my development. Anyone, I'm not able to see, you know, I am not able to have that feeling of gratitude in continuity towards my parents. Because this feeling of opposition, getting irritation, getting angry, these are all an indicators of not being able to have that feeling of gratitude in continuity. So the feeling of gratitude is naturally acceptable to us or feeling of ingratitude is naturally acceptable to us. So we can ask you know, students to at least make a list, list of your friends, list of your family members, list of your parents, list of the teachers, list of the people in the society. Because I think that I have money, I go to the shop, I buy the things. But the shopkeeper is providing me with that physical facilities. Each one of us, you know, had uh, uh, clarify our misconception that money can buy everything during the pandemic. We had money, but the shops were closed. So even if I have money and I stand in front of my house, but if that, you know, that milkman doesn't come and drop the milk, will I get the money in milk? So there's a whole lot of people who are involved in, in production, in distribution, in transportation, in sales, in promotion, right? So do I need to have some sort of feelings towards them or not? I go to the canteen, college canteen, you know, I pay the money, I get the food, but the cook who is preparing the food, you know, the waiter who is serving the food, How do I need to interact with them? So if I have that feeling of connectedness, if I have that respect, you know, the other is like me, then the gratitude is a natural outcome of it. And that, that gratitude is very significant in the development of relationship. And with that, you know, we each one of us can ask this question to ourselves that if I want to be related to, how many? 
none, one, many, or all. So our natural acceptance is to have the feeling of being related to all. And that is the complete value in relationship. That is love. So the feeling of love, which means the feeling of being related to all, and that all includes every single human being who is living in my family and every single human being who is living outside the family in my country and the other countries too, in my state and other state too. So with such feelings, you know, we are able to see that my family would mean the one is my biological family, my parental family, but my family the extension form of my family is the world, the world family. And with that, we are also able to see our feeling of relationship towards every single unit which exists in the nature, the material, bio, birds and animals. So this is the complete value in relationship. And reaching to this you know, state of love, that is the completeness of right understanding within. That is the state of understanding the feelings within and living with these feelings outside. That is the state of an excellence. And now we can see that each one of us wants to excel in our life or not. So when we say excellence, excellence, which means the completion of our right understanding. Excellence, which means the competency to relate with every single human being and every single unit of rest of the nature. So excellence would mean understanding harmony, starting from myself to the whole existence and living with that harmony unconditionally and continuous. That is basically reaching to my target goal of basic aspiration. And that is what success is. Rest all are these steps to reach to this success. So we need to, you know, help our student to understand what is success. And for that, we need to help our students to understand the basic aspiration and also way to fulfill the basic aspiration. So love is the complete value in relationship. Love is the feeling of being related to all. And with this feeling of love and the clarity of the rest of the eight feelings, the trust, you know, trust is having clarity that other wants to make me happy. So I am going to have this clarity for myself. You are going to have this clarity for yourself. So the, with this clarity, the trust will ensure in you. Today, there's a lack of trust because there is doubts on the intention. But with the clarity on the intention, the trust will get ensured with you. And once you have the feeling of trust continuously in you, will you expect trust from the others or will you live with the feeling of trust with the others? Similarly, when you are able to do the right evaluation of yourself and when you are able to do the right evaluation of other, that the other is similar to you, you are going to have this clarity. And with such clarity, you will accept other as your relative. And that's the feeling of affection. And when you are able to have this feeling of affection, you would be able to identify your responsibility and commitment towards the other. So all these feelings are going to be developed in you. And when the feelings will develop, develop in you, you will live with this feeling with the other. See the one outcome of understanding and developing these feelings within each one of us within you is your harmony. 
the disharmony today the contradiction today the unhappiness today the disturbance the turmoil today is because of not having these feelings continuously so whenever there's a lack of these feelings you are unhappy whenever you have these feelings you are in harmony so that part is guaranteed you are harmony other thing is that when you are in harmony you interact other person with the same happiness so you spread happiness you are happy with him you give happiness to the other so that leads to the other person so it leads to the mutual happiness now if you look in what we talk about the relationship today you know generally when we discuss about these feelings there's a prevailing notion that it's give and take respect give and take trust give and take love give and take but this is what we are assuming but then if you have this feeling then continuously you will be living with this feeling so you will give this feeling to the other so if you look into the science of relationship the economics of happiness is not give and take rather we have reached to the state of take and take only only expectations so the one step ahead the give and take is much better but the absolute state is relationship is give and give the economics of happiness based on giving and giving so once you have you give it to the other and that is the expression of love okay i hope i have answered your question jasmine ji okay sir thank you thank you sushma ji i just uh, lowering down all the hands hoping that Hello. your questions being addressed yes sushma ji Hello, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sir, uh, whatever the concerns that you have put on this uh, screen now, it is uh, very evident to today's uh, discussion and uh, the situation. What is happening? My uh, uh, query or my concern was about uh, you were talking about the competencies and how, especially when we were discussing about the survival in the era of high level competition, there is survival everywhere. and uh, i think it was einstein who said you know if you keep judging by uh, the fish in its ability to climb the tree it will always think its entire life it's it's a foolish animal so i think it is high time that uh, in the education policy or through this reforms we are able to under undermine i mean we have to identify what is the skill of a person and if that person is uh, involved it may be the student if he is involved in that particular skill probably i think more reforms can be brought about because his mind uh, will be channelized in trying to work towards his goal or towards his ambition so what is your view on that sir so and i think even the concerns that you have put about you know how education health the governance so when he has chosen his skill or his thing his area of interest probably he will be able to prosper and once he is able to work for his own enrichment then probably he can be a a, a very good element in the society when people can look about on him and all such kinds of you know negativity can be reduced sir can you please elaborate or can you please uh, reflect or can you please give your uh, valuable suggestions on this uh, view sir yeah so what's the goal of student yes sir yes what is the goal of student sushma ji sir i feel that uh, it is uh, today i think it's become morely only into getting the marks uh, scoring the first rank you know uh, clearing all the subjects without arrears getting a job because we are all engineering faculties sir uh, i think most of my dear colleagues in this discussion sushma, can relate sushma ji sushma ji what is the definite goal of a student so that is what i feel it is like this they have to come to college get the marks get the degree get a job settle settle in life yeah what is meant by settlement settlement is that that means i mean i feel that the students you know they have to amass more wealth they have to take the highest uh, package salary they have to accumulate more of physical wealth 
I think most of the students are heading in that direction today, sir. No, 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 no. What the students are heading, that's a different thing. I'm asking you, what is mean by settlement in the life? Settlement is not I uh, accord. It should it should have been commitment or fulfillment. But uh, as I said, they are in a different direction. Actually, it should have been they should be happy and contented. Sushma ji, yeah, Sushma ji, they are in a different direction. Right? Yes, sir. And it's a role of teacher, right? You and me. To help How can we do under- that, sir? Can you please to, suggest uh, yeah, some tips? To help sir, them to, to help to help them to understand the purpose, to help them to understand yes. the basic aspiration. Okay, to help okay. them to understand the goal, the settlement. Okay, so. You know, settlement is not getting. I mean, settlement is not only getting a job, constructing a house, buying a yes, car, sir. but the settlement is getting a job, constructing a house, buying a car, and also ensuring the health of the body, and also living with the feeling of relationship with other human being and the rest of the nature. If we yes, are able sir. to do it, we are settled. Yes, sir. Exactly. If we are not able to do it, you mm. know, we feel that many things are missing out. Yes. We don't, you know, despite of having a that so-called big job and so-called accumulation of physical facility, if we yes, feel, sir. if if there is a, you know, feeling that things is missing out, which means we are not settled. Yes. So we need to understand what is settlement for ourselves first. And with yes. that, we will be able to help students to verify within wow. themselves. Okay. okay. And okay, for sir. that, and for that, the education is required. Yes. Because yes. human conduct is based on the education and sanskar. Correct, sir. Yes. And that is what AICT is trying to do it. So from yes, the sir. AICT, you know, they have introduced <laughs> this UHV one, UHV two the student yes. induction program and organizing these workshops on every Monday. This is 62nd in the series. Also organizing these follow-up meetings. Now it is yes. our responsibility, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so with this, we'll just uh, proceed a little ahead and then in between, you know, we'll keep interacting with each other. So, this session is focusing on understanding uh, society. And when it comes to the concerns related to the society, uh, like one of the major concerns a student has when he comes to our college, uh, till, the, till the date, you know, he was protected by the parents. And most of the uh, students, when they go for their professional education, engineering and other you know, most of them uh, go and move away from their family, the family, uh, the hometown. So this is always a concern for the students. How will I able to cope up? How will I able to face the challenges? And we do have a sort of similar concern when we go to the new place. Then there is always been talk about this communal disharmony in the society. Communal disharmony is there. There are so many complaints. And most of the times, you know, we talk about this concern. So how can be there communal harmony in the society is one of the concern for students and it's also one of the concern for us. Then we talk about crimes. The students also have the same concern how the society be a crime free, and especially the crimes against women, the crimes against the children. Corruption is another concern, you know, when it comes to the society. So how can I play my role in making a corruption free society? That's also a concern. Then, you know, when we look at the society, there's a whole lot of uh, gap between the rich by wealth and poor by wealth. So what could be the solution to minimize this gap? Then when, when we say society at large, you know, many times we have concern and that those concerns are basically 
those concerns are basically how to develop the world as a better place for living you know this international relationship the relationship with the neighbor neighboring countries neighboring continent this is you know another concern when we talk about the society then what are this area do i need to pick for innovation research in my higher study which can be useful for the society at large how do i and my family you know parental family and my future family live together right so the parental family is the existing family of the children student and the future family is the workplace so how i live together maintain the balance between this two so society has got various system even if you look today for example education health market governance judiciary media public services government non ngos etc etc so can i have a holistic understanding for all these systems and identify my role therein so these are the concerns you know general concerns so we can put up this concerns in the beginning of this uh, session and then we can also ask uh, if they have any additional concerns related to the society okay and then look at each of this concern like i am asking you a question talking only on the concerns will be able to solve this concerns or i also need to talk on the solution to resolve this concerns so talking only on the problems doing the evaluation of the problems would not lead to the solution but to provide the solutions for these concerns i need to have that resolution within so with such resolutions i would be able to identify my own role in solving this concerns because anyway i am connected to the society i am also a society and the other human being are also part of society so i can do my participation and similarly every human being can do their own participation and that would help to make the society the way we visualize it so if you have any other concern you can share so you can ask this thing to the student so once we have this concerns list ready with us then we can also ask students to resolve this concern do we need to have the solution support talking and discussing only on the problems and problems would ever help you to resolve the problems or not and if you want to resolve this problem this right understanding is required or not so the concerns at any level the individual level family level society level you know if we want to resolve the concern the right understanding is essentially required so with that right understanding only you know we can participate in resolving the con concerns with that when we look into the present state of the society right? many a times there is a very limited vision and what that limited vision is me i me and myself sometimes you know in some cases we are able to see extension of that vision from i me and myself to my family and when i am saying extension i mean to say i am participating in ensuring the right understanding and right feelings in my family member 
I am participating in harmony of my family member. So that is, you know, the extended vision. Sometimes, you know, uh, we get to see that um, people are uh, connected with the with their job. They feel that this is the responsibility at the workplace, and they do their job. My career, my enjoyment at workplace and in my family. So this is sort of a a limited vision, and you know, in majority of the cases, we are able to see that we are living with such sort of limited vision. But then when we look into the expanse of our living, we live from our own self to the whole existence every moment. So the expanse of our living is different, the complete expanse of living, and the vision is very narrow and with, it's, it's very limited. So what do you think with such limited vision, would we be able to be in a harmony? With such limited understanding, would you be able to ensure the harmony and continuity? Because the real life is not just this. Right? The real life, we have to face the society in multiple ways. We interact with number of people associated with number of organizations and systems, starting from buying a railway ticket for the local train, traveling in a local train with the people. Even when you are driving a vehicle on the road, it's not only you is there on the vehicle, I mean, on the road. Right? So our existence is supported by a whole lot of organizations, systems, and the people, and that is the real life. So when we do not have holistic vision of the society and we are faced with some disturbing issue, then we try to fight against the problems. And in the process of fighting against the problem, many a times, you know, you feel lonely. I mean, there's a possibility that at initial stage, there are, you know, couple of people, there are few people with you. But in the process of fighting with the problems, you feel lonely, you feel that only you are doing it, there is no one is supporting because you are fighting with the problem without the vision, the world vision, the societal vision. And if you look into the present state, you know, this is the present state. So can there be a holistic vision for a harmonious society, a harmonious world? Unless my vision is clear, how do I pick my role in, in it? And hence, I need to understand the common goal of human beings living in the society together. So this way, after preparing the list of the concern and then making the list of the present state, we can connect the students and we can help them to you know, realize that this understanding on the common goal of a human beings living in the larger society, living together for the mutual fulfillment, this understanding is required. And with such understanding, I will be able to pick my role in the society. Isn't it? So we can have a reflection here. So I need to have the holistic vision of the society to address the issues and the concepts related to the society. Saurabh Rajji, do you have any sharing or question? Saurabh Rajji. Uh, yes, sir. 
Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Umesh Ji, Namaskar. Am I audible? Namaskar, Namaskar. Very clear. Uh, sir, my question, my rather my doubt is that when we say that uh, feeling of uh, being connected to everyone is love. Yeah. So it is only for the human order or it extends to all the four orders that you are feeling uh, connected with the material order to pranic order to animal order and all that. Sometimes we say that I am in love with uh, the nature. I am in love with the vegetation. I am in love with the my, my pets and all that. So yeah. we feel connected with them. Yeah, the moment we understand what is meant by all, the answer yeah. comes. So all would means only human being or all would means human being and every single unit which exists in the existence. Exactly. So all, means, all means every single unit which exists in the existence. So right, the feeling right. of being related to human, animal, bio and material is love. Exactly, sir. So, uh, why the doubt came that in the slide it was written everyone. So that uh, that was confusing me actually. It should be every unit actually. Yeah, I mean there is an extension. It's right. it, it it starts with one many and then it reaches to every unit one and every unit. Right. So that ex right. that extension is there on the slides too. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. A nice nice observation. Thank you. Yes, Balbir Singh ji. Balbir Singh ji. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir apart from that, uh, that one concern is there that uh, breaking of families. Right now, that we see that many cases are there, and uh, every new couple they want to be away from the joint families. They are, they want everyone want a freedom, and uh, and there are many divorce cases are increasing. So that breaking of a family is also a very, a very serious concern is there right now, yes. what we see, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, true, yes, sir. true. True. Okay, so that so, concern can also be listed there. Right, so that's a very, especially this is a, again against the family system now. You know that uh, new generations, they have uh, some belief and I, they, I think uh, from the, Western culture that uh, living relations are okay, why to go for marry and other things are there. These are also coming in the society. Yes. So then this is very uh, dangerous to the family systems and uh, value systems. So how to take up this also? That is, a, I think that is a problem somewhere with the relationships only. I think and due to that. Thank yeah, you. I mean, if, yeah, I mean, if you See, there is a problem, and if problem, we can ask why it is happening, and it's a very simple thing. It's happening because that because um, you know each one of us want to be an independent. Right. right? Each right. one of each each one of us wants to live privately. Right. <laughs> so that privately living and independent right. living because without of any this, without yeah. any without any accountability and responsibility. Yeah. The, yeah, and no responsibility, no ac accountability, no feeling of relationship, so no commitment. And there, is an, and there is an assumption that money is enough. So if I have money, I can, you know, I don't need anybody. So right. with such sort of assumptions, you know, these problems are happening. Right. Now, what's the solution? The solution is that there's a natural acceptance for the relationship. And when we live with the feeling of relationship, we are in harmony. So we need to provide this education to the children. That's the solution. Right. Only the education can help us. So that they, they will be able to explore. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Prerna ji. Ms. Prerna, I wanted to uh, ask something. Uh, as per we uh, are saying that he, uh, Nowadays, there's cases of divorce and uh, family issues. So, Didi, your voice is feeble a, a bit. Uh, it's not clear. Just a bit. Hello? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, as balbir bhai was saying there is uh, issues in the family there are cases of divorce so if we ensure right understanding then can we uh, say that all the uh, human beings or all couples or every individual is compatible with other and there is no uh, and there won't be any cases where we have misunderstandings within uh, with in relationships yeah i mean didi when you look into this we have natural acceptance for relationship living with the feeling of relationship right understanding which means development of competency to live with feeling of relationship so the problem today is we are not able to live with relationship it can be resolved by understanding relationship and living with relationship so the the concept of that saying that i am compatible with someone and not compatible with other will uh, be demolished completely then yeah i mean we draw such sort of conclusion with matching of our preconditioning yeah so if our preconditioning matches with some other person and if our preconditioning doesn't matches with some other person so with such sort of things we draw you know kind of conclusions okay but then no. but then image but then immediately we get the clarity that natural acceptance for uh, of of every individual is the same every human being is the same yes. and then we take efforts to live with our natural acceptance and that mm. is the solution and to reach to that solution i need to resolve within Okay, so that right understanding is equal to resolution within. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, thank you, Didi. Okay, so with this, we'll just let proceed a little further. So there are concerns in the society. There are problems today, and to resolve this, you know, the common goal of human society, identification of a common goal of human society is required. so one aspect of the common goal of human society this right understanding and right feelings in every individual so what you think this right understanding and right feeling is required in every individual yes no you can respond in the chat box without this right understanding and right feeling i mean with the lack of right understanding and right feeling will you be able to be happy continuously no okay so for the happiness what is essentially required is this right understanding and right feeling in every individual does that every individual also includes you or excluding you what do you think this including or excluding very nice very nice so this right understanding and right feeling is needed for me it's needed for every individual now if the right understanding and right feeling is needed for every individual and the human conduct is based on the education the input because education means understanding so this can be ensured and developed through education okay the next is prosperity with right understanding and right feelings in every individual the individual will develop competency to live with happiness within harmony within but is that the only essential requirement or the prosperity is also needed so the prosperity is also needed and the prosperity is the feeling of having more than required physical facilities right so happiness is also a need of a human being prosperity is also need of human being so the happiness can be ensured by development of right understanding and right feeling within and the prosperity by identification of required needs 
and having or producing more than required needs. Needs, the physical needs, that is the prosperity. So this prosperity can be ensured at the level of family. I, I can't say that, you know, I am prosperous in my family and my, pro, my family is not prosperous. So the prosperity is a common and collective goal of a family. The individual's goal is right understanding and right feeling within. So people living with right understanding and right feeling within have got the clarity that how much is required, what are the required physical facility for the nurturing and protection of the body they can do the correct assessment of their required physical facility and they would take collective efforts to make that physical facility available or to produce it with right skill and that right skill which means eco-friendly and human-friendly, the sustainable production. So for the common goal of a human society, the one is right understanding and right feeling in every individual. And the second is prosperity in every family. Is this enough or something else is required? So the society is also part. Fearlessness in the society. So if you look at the fear, fear is the lack of trust. If you have trust, there is no fear. If there is fear, there is no trust. So fearlessness is, it means trust. And the trust amongst and trust between the people can be ensured by these right feelings in every individual. So at the level of society, you know the trust. This trust can also be ensured by prosperity in every family, by clarity of prosperity in every family. That prosperity doesn't mean accumulation, but the prosperity would mean the correct assessment of physical facility. And then the fourth part is nature and existence. So coexistence at the level of nature and existence. So when we see the human goal, the human goal is right understanding and right feeling in every individual, prosperity in every family, fearlessness, trust in society, coexistence in nature and existence. So this becomes a common goal, a goal for every individual, every family. So individuals can identify their goal, family can identify their goal, and then this fearlessness and the coexistence, this is a natural outcome of it. And if you look at, at the base of it, this right understanding and right feeling, you know, this is the base. The rest three are the natural outcome or the expression of right understanding and right feeling within. So what do you think? to realize the desirable state of society, do we need to make a societal goal or human goal? Do we need to identify a societal goal or human goal? If there's a societal identification of societal goal, then who will achieve it? You know, who will take an effort for the fulfillment? So identification of societal goal would not work. The human goal needs to be identified. Family is the collection of human beings and society is the collection of family. Right? Now, we have a collective aspirations, right? Whenever we discuss, we talk about the society, you know, Mainly, we talk about the concerns related to the society. 
why do we talk about the concerns? Why do we have concerns related to the society? Because we are related. There is connectedness. That's the reason we have concern. And that is the reason we also have aspiration for harmony in the society. So these things, identification of human goal is required to fulfill the collective aspirations. So what do you think that all four things mentioned are required, desirable, can we leave something out? If all four are achieved, would anything else to be required? So let us have a reflection here. So are all four required? Yes or no? You can respond to it. Uh, Professor Chitraji, if you have already responded, then you can unmute yourself. Professor Chitra B. H. G. Mr. Abdul Rahman Ji. If you have any question, any sharing, you can unmute yourself. Mr. Abdul Rahman Ji. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, Ravindra Ji. Very clear. Yeah, go ahead, please. I observe one thing in the society, sir. Uh, nowadays, the people are not feared of God. So, they are, uh, they are doing all the corruptions. My observation, sir. Yeah. So, this is the problem, right? Yeah, in all the days, at least uh, uh, because of fear of God, uh, people are uh, people uh, behaved as good. But now people are uh, there enough to encroach even the temples, temple sites. Uh, like that, sir. So this physical facility is everything. This is an assumption, and under this assumption, all such kind of things are happening. Right? This is a problem. Yeah. So what's the solution, Raghavindra Ji? This is your concern. This is our concern. What is the solution? So we discussed in the first class, uh, we should uh, understand that physical facility is not, uh, it's not the goal of the life or it, it's not the complete thing in the life. So we have to uh, search for, I mean, we have to strive for uh, being happiness. Uh, very nice, very nice. So this is the solution. Now, what you can do for this? Yeah, the thing is, uh, uh, I have to give less importance to the materialistic things. Uh, I have to behave uh, as a good citizen. Secondly, I have to carry this uh, knowledge to the students. I have to make them realize that uh, money is not uh, all the important thing. There are some other things like uh, happiness, love, such things in the life which are important. Yeah. Raghavendra Ji, where are you from? I am from, I am from Hyderabad, sir. Which, which institute? DRIT Hyderabad College of Engineering for Women. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And very nice. I mean, it's very inspiring uh, to listen to you. Uh, I mean, clarity of such teachers can collectively bring the harmony in the society. You are aware of the problem. You are also aware of the solution at individual level. Yes, and you are also aware of how to participate to resolve this problem at the societal level. So uh, your, your sharing is very ins uh, you know, inspiring. And um, um, listening to such sort of sharing uh, that gives a confidence that the initiative taken by uh, AICTE uh, has become the responsibility of uh, the teachers like you and me all 
and we are ready to take up that responsibility so thank you so much that's very nice thank you sir thank you yeah so as raghavendra ji has mentioned this right understanding and right feeling is the most important thing and as a teacher you know is our responsibility to ensure this right understanding and right feelings see when we say teachers right i mean all the professions are uh, equally important all the professions contribute towards uh, body um, towards self Uh, towards material towards bio towards uh, animals and plants so we have all these proportions to ensure the harmony you know at all these four levels of our living the expanse uh, let's look at you know some of these professions like uh, farmer such an important job the farmer are the one who are producing the most essential required physical facility for the human being food look at doctors you know doctors are basically working on increasing the span of body treatment all this healing if the body is in a disharmony doctors you know helps to bring that harmony back so farmers are producing the required physical facility doctors are you know contributing to ensure the health of the body providing treatment but the teacher you know teacher is the only profession who works on the self of the student a teacher can ensure this right understanding and right feeling in the student so when we talk about this common goal of a human society right who is going to realize this common goal is you and me the teacher Okay, so the teachers, we need as we develop within our own self, we can be a part of this societal development. So anyway, we we have been doing it. I mean, most of us not only concerned with our uh, core subject, but most of us are concerned with with the student, with their life. and we keep providing you know solutions we keep uh, giving them suggestions we have been doing it now doing it and now the another thing doing with a purpose so with such content and the process of self exploration you know we can still keep doing it whether we are teaching uhb or we are not teaching uhb we teach our mathematics and during our mathematics classes also we talk about life many a times right so if we understand that these values are more important than the skills the skills are also important but the values you know can guide the skills then you know we can make a practice of sparing 5 10 minutes from our every lecture and we can uh, guide our student to prepared for the life also prepared for the job correct so this right understanding and right feeling that is what you know the central part and the teacher has a responsibility to ensure this right understanding and right feeling through education now the important question are we working for all in the society and what about in the family right this is what the aspiration but are we really working to fulfill this aspiration at the level of society and at the level i mean in the family yeah mrs suji do you have any question
Mrs. Suji J. Do you have any question? Abhijit ji. Sir, uh, I would like uh, to add something here. The right understanding and right feeling with natural acceptance. Because naturally, or uh, is, is it, it uh, comes with right understanding only, natural acceptance? Yeah, when we say right understanding, I mean, the base, basis of the right understanding is always natural acceptance. Okay. It comes and, from the natural yes, acceptance. Yes. And yes. one more thing I would like to add, sir, uh, that right understanding at individual level, uh, even uh, at family level, means if we put arrow about right understanding to every family, society, and nature. So this particular factor, which is right understanding and right feeling, uh, is, uh, I think, connected with all the, these four uh, stakeholders as an individual, family, society, and nature. Because uh, individual is a subset of nature. As so basically, right understanding of these three are interlinked with each other. And uh, by having right understanding about these things also, right? about what is prosperity, and what is trust, and what is coexistence, we can have a horizontal arrow also uh, going towards right understanding and right understanding uh, at every level. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Abhijit ji, this right understanding is going to ensure in every individual who is living in different levels. Yes. So the core part is an individual human being and the right understanding and right feeling is essentially required in every human being. And the outcome of it can be seen in the form of prosperity in every family, fearlessness in the society, and the coexistence in nature and existence. Yes, you would like to say that the outcome of right understanding and right feeling is this, these three things. Prosperity, trust, and mutual enrichment. Yeah, I mean, so, even, 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 you know, if you look into our uh, living today, whatever we have understood, you know, we each one of us is living with our understanding, right? Yes. And uh, with the same understanding, we are living in family, we are living in society, we are living with the nature and existence. Yes. Yeah. The only uh, after the self exploration, I would be able to understand the things rightly by referring to my natural acceptance, and we live at all these levels. This is the only thing, and that is okay. the role of education. Uh, okay. means this will be it is uh, it is evident that this will be there at every level and right? this right understanding and right feeling yeah whether whether i i am living with an understanding or i'm living with right understanding you know at every level i'm living and my living is the reflection of my understanding or right understanding but if i have this right understanding and right feelings then i'm happy within and with such happiness, I would be able to, uh, with such right understanding, I will be able to do the correct assessment of the need of physical facility and also interact with the feeling of uh, trust in the society, which leads to the fearlessness and would also able to understand my relationship with the rest of the nature and participate in the fulfillment of my relationship with the rest of the nature. Yes, sir. One, sir, one more question. Uh, that uh, reverence and respect, right? both seems to be similar. Uh, so can you guide okay, thank us? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. See the, the ability, the competency, the clarity to see that other is similar to me is respect. Okay, this is respect. Reverence is the acceptance of excellence. And what is excellence? Understanding harmony and living in harmony at all the four levels, which means living with love and expression of love 
in com with compassion which means the completeness of right completeness of right understanding okay so feeling for those who achieved excellence gives reverence means having positive feeling about them or respect for them and those who achieved excellence is it like that yeah we need to understand excellence first okay so excellence which means understanding harmony and living in the harmony that is the completeness of right understanding living with love and compassion every moment with every unit and every human being okay so acceptance of this excellence the feeling that feeling part is the reverence so that would help us to understand and for and from such revered one you know we receive inspiration because we also wants to excel in our life so we take up the proposals and we verify the proposals within our self and we try to reach to the same level okay so that is reverence thank you sir yeah, thank you so this is what you know is uh, the human goal but what is happening today if you look at what is happening today if you look at the current system uh, there is a sort of an assumption which has gone down to almost every individual that money is everything and with such assumptions you know the results like obsession for the consumption obsession for profit obsession for sensual pleasure you know this is what is happening accumulation by any means so whether it's ethical unethical legal illegal natural unnatural you know by any may any way but that accumulation is required and this is possible in few family few individuals and not possible for all the families and all the individuals and that is the reason you know we are able to see there is a whole lot of struggle between the one who is exploiting and the one who is getting exploited as one of the result of it we you know we see this domination exploitation and fear in the society resulting into war terrorism at a large and the level but even at the smaller level like units like family workplace you know something is happening we are able to see the consequences of it the domination exploitation and fear and there is an assumption that human being is the supermost species and have got all the right to show mastery and exploit over the exploit the nature you know so we are the supermost so we can exploit we can you know harvest we can mine as much as we want which is resulting into resources depletion pollution etc etc you know all sort of environmental problem ranging from global warming to changing temperature pattern so this is what is happening in the current system and what we are trying to do till today either we are managing with the current system without identification of this human goal and working for this human goal so if as a human being we identify this human goal and if we start working for this human goal realization of this human goal through education and sanskar that would help to minimize this problems resolve this issue so it's not managing it is resolving so to resolve the issue you know i need to have that resolution within and that resolution 
is an outcome of right understanding and right feelings within me and and then i could participate in multiplying this right understanding and right feeling with others so we can have a reflection here so education needs to connect directly to the human goal let me see any question uh, mrs priyanka shrivastav ji priyanka ji Yeah, Didi. Uh, uh, good evening, sir. I just have a doubt. Actually, uh, while working for human goal, we have to start from individual, uh, then to family, then to society, and then to nature. Uh, so, uh, a person who is working, we have, we are see, we have seen you no know, people. Uh, there are people who really work for the nature. So, um, uh, so that means those people had. Uh, explored the other three uh, very well and had come to this uh, this situation this fourth level see when it is saying first and then two and then two mm -hmm. so this is not then two and then two the a reflection in my participation in my society's nature and family is my own right understanding and right feeling okay. so the right understanding and right feeling is required in every individual so as you develop with right understanding and right it's not completeness of right understanding first and then you will work on the prosperity see in the introductory workshop and after the introductory workshop you know there are many participants who shares that we are able to uh, uh, cut down our uh, shopping things right uh, uh, we we are able to do this assessment of our uh, physical needs and we are able to see that we have enough at least you know in terms of clothes many of uh, them have done this exercise so that doesn't means the rightness right understanding got completed so it is also in a process and as we develop in our right understanding and right feeling it reflects naturally in family society nature and existence because every moment we are living in this four order uh, four states right there is no single moment wherein you are not in one of these four state because you are a unit in the existence and the existence includes all these things nature society family and individual right so every moment we are living so as we develop our right understanding and right with uh, right feelings within our own self uh, it reflects naturally at all these levels and even in the process of development not only you know after the completion of development of right understanding okay priya ji yeah yes sir. because i have a doubt because some people go and work in society without if you say their family the family might not be in um what do you call uh, the relationship is uh, not uh, good but they do and go work in the society so that means um, they will not be actually doing proper to the society yeah see i mean when you look into this um this can be uh, categorized i mean these are the four uh, uh, aspects the uh, of human goal okay but when it's to realize this human goal uh, we also need a foundational system at the level of society like uh, education and sanskar health um, business um, justice right uh, nature all this all these sort of things are there so it's not that every individual can contribute towards nature some of them some of us would have a special interest towards nature so we'll contribute towards nature when it comes to the nature again you know we can some of us would contribute towards uh, preservation of uh, the constitution of material or uh, the seed of a tree or the breed of animal whole lot of categorizations and the sub categorizations are there and based on it you know we uh, 
decide to participate um ensuring this harmony outside some of us may participate in the society some of us may participate at the level of family so it's not that every person it would not be possible even for every person to participate in all the uh, foundational system of the society we can choose just one uh, or no uh, my question was sir some people know they do social work but they if you see the family part it might not be uh, in a proper place Uh, so that was uh, my uh, question i know yeah, I, everybody yeah, can't do, part in yeah i do understand your question mm -hmm. you know you know first you uh, related with the nature people are participating now you are relating with the people who are participating in the society i am saying the same thing again what i'm saying is uh -huh. this right understanding and right feeling is required in every individual and with that right understanding and right feeling whatever we do the participation outside whether in in society nature or in family that would be a right participation okay okay sir thank you yes. thank you yeah so based on the discussions we had uh, in this session we can give this home assignment to to the student that how do you want to live in your institution in in the hostel with a common goal and a common program of action and everyone in inst in the institution hostel uh, does a part of that common program with everyone having their own goals and own program so we can ask them we can also ask them to make not a code of conduct basically but uh, their ideas for their own hostel which will help everyone in the hostel to realize that common hostel goal okay so even if you look into like our workplace you know our college is a society a small small society a small component of a larger society right and even at the level of college we want to have this harmony so the program for harmony in the college is possible without ensuring this right understanding and right feeling in every individual what do you think yes no Will it be possible to ensure the right harmony in the college without development of this right understanding and right feelings in every individual? So the right understanding and right feeling that is the most important part, and the harmony is not possible without it. so what do we understand through it that if we take efforts for our own development at least we can take it to the student from student it will get multiplied to their family we can also you know start conducting sessions for non teaching staff or the small small group of the student for the two reason number one for that harmony in the college right understanding and right feeling is most important part that is essentially required so i can participate into it and by participating i will be keep practicing it so we need to create opportunity for our own participations and there is whole lot of opportunity right now as we are talking about hostel so in the hostel also the weekly meetings are required so the pro host the hostel rectors you know also need to have exposure to the content so that they can organize hostel meeting you know weekly meeting or quarterly i mean whatever the system you know, this can always be a customized uh, form 
depends on the availability of resources and the time. So such things are required. So through this right understanding and right feelings only, each one of us who is the part of the college will be able to identify our goal and we will be able to identify our role for the fulfillment of the common goal. And that's how slowly and gradually, you know, we can take steps towards harmony at the level of college. All these different cells and the committee systems are already in the place. You start reading the list of the committees and the systems and the cells you have for the well-being of the college. You'll find that everything is there. There's a mess management committee, there's a cultural committee, there is disciplinary committee, there is you know, all these committees, all these cells, all these clubs, everything is there. The infrastructure is there. People are there. The committee is there. Now only by keeping this right understanding and right feelings at the center, the prosperity, fearlessness, and the coexistence as the outcome of it, we can just revisit the objectives, vision, and the mission of the committees. So what do you think? The, what shall be the role of disciplinary committee? To maintain the discipline in the college or to encourage students to be self-disciplined? What do you think? To maintain the discipline in the college, doing the policing, enforcing rules, regulations, laws. Yeah, very nice, you know. So the main objective and the purpose of the discipline committee is to develop this self-discipline in the students. And the students can be self-disciplined with the self-confidence and the self-confidence can come with right understanding. What do you think? The role of a cultural committee, you know, we have number of celebrations uh, every year in our college, in our campus. So what is the role of cultural committee? To sensitize the sensations, to spread assumptions, or to express or the expression of feelings, the expression of right understanding. So when we start understanding it, you know, we can discuss, we can have discussions as we, if we are the part of it, then we can discuss the students, you know, whether these sensations are going to make you happy or this is the temporary source of happiness or when you, uh, you know, indulge, involved in sensations. Uh, do you feel irritated? Do you feel harmonious? So what sort of programs we can have in the college? The programs which would draw the attention towards right understanding and right feeling or to maximize the sensation. Let us ask, let's discuss, let's propose. There's a possibility that, you know, today you will discuss next year you may have something in place, but the problems are there, the concerns are there. And with such problems and concerns, if we have this holistic vision, then we can be the part of resolving it. We can be the part of providing solution. And slowly and gradually, you know, such sort of solutions can be implemented. I'm not saying neither we are expecting that it will happen tomorrow only. No, it's not possible. But then we have to start somewhere because we are not happy with managing with the current system, though we have been trying to do it. We need to provide the solutions for the current system. Similarly, the, the, the mess management committee is there who are you know, managing on the quality of the food, the menu, 
and all this cleanliness, everything. So the mess management committee can think about it. You know, what is the role of food? Again, is just to satisfy the test or the main is nurturing the body. And the food we are providing in our canteen, is it really contributing in nurturing the body, canteen or mess, or it is just, you know, um, focusing on the test? So we can have the current menu. Why such sort of alternatives even in our canteen and maze so that at least slowly and gradually, you know, at least slowly and gradually they will be able to pick uh, these things up. So how do you want to live in your hostel, in your college area? So these are the home assignments. And the another, today there's a struggle, competition, terrorism, war. Yes, it is there. You know, we are not saying it is not there. It is there in family. It is there in my own colony I live. It is there in my own city I live. It is there in my own state I belong to, my own country, my own continent, my own world. It is there. It is there outside and it is also there inside me. You know, the struggle is there inside me. The competition is there inside me. The terrorism, the war, the opposition is there inside me, within me. So the problems within me leads to the frustration. And many times, you know, to find out a temporary solution or to escape from the problems, we tend to get into alcoholism or drugs or etc, cetera, etc, cetera, such kind of things. So what can be done to address the problems? Such sort of problems in your hostel. So we can see there's a disharmony. Disharmony is there in the world. The two continents, two countries, two states, the two cities of the same state, right? Two colonies of the same city, two neighbors of the same colony, two member of the same family, and even within an individual. The disharmony is there. So all this disharmony outside is basically there's a disharmony within me. So the second assignment, you know, is best on it. So what can be done to address the problems about it in your hostel? And the third, list the avenues of participating meaningful, meaningfully in the society. Right where you are. For example, your family, in the hostel, in the institution, in the community, around you. You know, includes related clubs and schemes like Shiksha Sopan, NSS, and et cetera, et cetera. You know, all those things we talked about. Because the more we understand the complete expanse of our being, and we take efforts in living with the complete expanse of our being, we are in harmony with the limited vision we are in disharmony so as a human being we are the member of society i am receiving quite a good number of things from the society so what is my participation okay so this is 
the next question. So in this session, basically, you know, these are the four key points. Number one is uh, human goals at all the levels of living, the systems, dimensions of society, steps of universal human order, and examples to illustrate. So these are the key points. So with this, you know, we can sum up this session again by doing the recap of whatever we discussed about the society, that society is the composed of family living together with the feeling of relationship of mutual fulfillment. Society is not families living together without understanding the mutual fulfillment or common goal. Society is not families living together with differing in goal or conflicting in goal. But society is a composed of family living together in a relationship of mutual fulfillment. They have a common goal, which is right understanding and right feeling in every individual, prosperity in every family, fearlessness, trust in society, coexistence in nature and existence. And for that family is a basic unit. So society is composed of family. Group of families, village family, group of village families, town family, and so on and so forth. So for the harmony, you know, for this undivided society, for harmony in society, what is essentially required is identification of human goal as right understanding and right feeling in every individual, prosperity in every family, fearlessness, trust in the society and coexistence in nature and existence.